If you're still for some reason watching Agatha all along, like I sadly am, you were just treated to the worst episode of the season by far. The ladies traded their trip to Nepal where they did some fun wine testing for a jam session in the 70s. And I sure hope you're not sick of the Witch's Road song, because they already brought it back two episodes later. Let's talk about this disappointing trash fire in another recap video. While I'm collecting my thoughts, if you wouldn't mind snapping that subscribe button, that way these videos show up in the future, uh, especially if you hit the notification bell. That's actually more paramount than the subscribe even, then these populate in your feed. All right, let's talk about this. We fire up this episode just as we left, with Mrs. Hart dead and gone. They're now burying her in the ground. As one does. You can't really bury someone in the air, I suppose. That was unnecessary to point out. Agatha, easily the most unlikable character in the show, is throwing a fit about it, saying, Time is of the essence, ladies. Why are we wasting precious minutes burying this woman? Also, is there not like a magic spell they can do to make this go faster? Seriously, these are all witches who do almost no witching. Where's the craft? Since Hart has been buried six feet under, the coven's gonna have a hard time progressing because they're a witch down. They need a new green witch, and Agatha knows the solution. It's one she's avoided this entire time so far. Her old girlfriend, the old flame. I mean, I don't know if they're girlfriends, but there's a lot of sexual tension, it's palpable, and that doesn't change on this episode when they do a little magic chant, which brings Rio right into their arms. They did a little chant and that pulled a witch into the road. I'm not sure how that happens, but nothing in this show makes any sense. It's all witchcraft and nonsense, so who cares, right? But Aubrey Plaza's back, which is nice. I, I was missing her in the show. She doesn't bring much to the table, unfortunately. She's gonna spend most of the time just kind of looking cool and a little sinister in the background and the camera will just keep showing her doing nothing, just standing there like, <laughs> but that's kind of a lot of this show showing agatha pursing the lips come on ladies let's go sashaying around the witch's road like she owns the damn place every episode conveniently only focuses on one witch able to do anything and this one's all about alice and her trauma with her mom the women head to a cabin that looks like a rock and roll palace where they're magically transported back in time. They have new outfits on, Agatha's checking herself out in the mirror. And again, Catherine Hahn, I've mentioned this before, always been a fan of hers. Something's off in this show. I don't know if it's the direction or just where she wanted to take the character, but I find nothing enjoyable about this character anymore. She was fun and silly and wild and crazy in WandaVision. Here though, she just seems like she's full of herself, cool as hell, pursing the lips 24-7, just walking around going like this. And her arms are always out here. She's always just doing stuff with her arms for some reason. Nothing's happening, but it's like she's a marionette doll just getting moved around. Alice, I would say, is the most boring of the bunch, so focusing on her, not my ideal episode. Um, it's gonna talk about a little bit about her past, how her mom saved her life warded off this evil trauma, this demon that is following her along her bloodline. And now it is spread out to the rest of the witches in the coven. They each get attacked by this invisible entity that doesn't reveal itself to later, which is comically stupid looking demon with cheap looking wings. It, it's really bad. It looks like something out of one of those spirit Halloween shops that pop up every year. No, but they're gonna get into the rock and roll outfits and realize that they have to play the witch's road because this version of the song that her mom wrote actually wards off the demon. Most of the cast doesn't seem familiar with the instruments they have to play, but they wing it and of course it works out just fine. Because anybody that hasn't really played a bass guitar or drums knows that really you can pick it up and play it almost instantaneously. Really little training practice needs to be had. It's, it's just kind of like breathing. Thankfully they played this music perfectly and they were able to defeat the demon. But it came at a horrific cost. The teen boy that they still haven't named anything has been marked and he's going to die unless they do something about it. Thankfully, Bullring has the solution since she's a potions expert. All that's required to heal this boy is moonlight and water. They have those both readily available. She picks up a little log full of water, pours it on the wound and then does a little chant and he's healed. It's perfect. So scared for him. This will lead to some vulnerability by Agatha, who was very concerned that this kid was gonna die. Previously, she hasn't shown any remorse for anyone. 
So yeah, a little bit of humanity is nice. However, the only real interesting secret has kind of been flubbed because Aubrey Plaza's Rio says to her, he's not your son. Just an episode back, that was kind of the little thing they were dangling over us, the carrot. Ooh, is she related to him? I still don't really care one way or the other, but at least this gives us something to think about. Now that's been taken from us. Of course, this could be a misdirect. We don't really know Rio's plans or anything about this character other than she's the Green Witch, as she says. They were about this close together, ready to have that sweet embrace, that kiss that we've all been waiting for or something. <laughs> So brave, Disney. So brave. Alas, this magical moment does not occur because Agatha's a little perturbed to hear this news. She hides it, of course, by going, Okay, ladies. <laughs> and she walks off. Saunters off, really. She saunters off. Down that witch's road, do, do, do. Down that fucking road. Um, I hated this. It was cheap looking. There was no stakes to anything. The characters are not very fun or likable. They're just kind of all there. It's just a nothing show. And what is the point of it even? Agatha, okay, she gets her powers back. Do I care? This woman sucks. And Catherine Hahn does not play her in an interesting way. It's cartoonish, but not in a fun way. And the show foolishly kills off the best character, Mrs. Hart. That's the fish out of water character that gets to point things out and be like, what is happening? Why am I here? This is insane. Not that she did a lot of that, really. She was pretty on board with all the craziness, which I found a little bizarre, but whatever. And so what we have is just more trials. So far, the two we've seen have been incredibly lame. And I imagine the rest are going to be just as lackluster. So after a couple more trials, we're going to have probably a couple more witches get killed. They'll probably all come back at the end because Agatha's going to learn that the power of love is stronger than any witchcraft she can possess. So she's going to use her wish to bring them all back or some stupid nonsense. Again, I ask why. I just ask why. But of course I'm going to watch because uh, I've been covering this show. I, I said I'm going to cover this if people watch the videos. And I'm going to cover The Penguin. The Penguin, unfortunately, is getting terrible views. So I might have to bid it ado. I'll watch it still. But putting out the videos, it takes work. It takes time. And I'm not getting rewarded for it. So we're going to be miserable together watching Agatha all along. All right. Let me know if you watch this. Your thoughts. Put them below in the comments. Again, think about subscribing. This is a movie channel first and foremost. I'll have my review of The Joker 2 coming out probably later tonight. And tomorrow I'll have a spoiler video and I'll, you know, I'll do a couple on it. Again, hit that notification bell, like this video, and I would absolutely appreciate if you followed me on patreon.com slash adamdoesmovies. Maybe think about supporting the channel there. I have different tiers with different access to shows. I brought a favorite of mine back called The Cringe. So for $5 a month, you get an exclusive cringe episode on top of 300 exclusive videos that are already available there. I think it's a great offer, especially if you like my content, because it's the best way to support this channel and my one-man band. Regardless, I appreciate you taking time to watch the show, and hopefully, I see you next time. Down that witch's road, in dum 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 dum.